The second reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 10. Don't let this rattle you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There is plenty of room for you in my father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I am on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm, not, if I'm on my way to get a room ready, I'll come back and get you so that you can live where I live. And you already know the road I am taking. Thomas said, Master, we have no idea where you're going. How do you expect us to know the road? Jesus said, I am the road, also the truth, also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. If, if you really know me, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him. You have even seen him. Philip said, Master, show us the Father, then we'll be content. You've been with me all this time, Philip, and you still don't understand? To see me is to see the Father. So how can you ask, where is the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak to, to you aren't mere words. I don't just make them up on my own. The Father who resides in me crafts each word into a divine act. This is the word of the Lord. Lord Jesus, be our road, our truth, our life today. Speak your word of challenge and comfort. Amen. I imagine if we took a straw poll of our whole church family and your reactions to all the pomp and circumstance of yesterday's coronation, there would be different viewpoints. Some of you, and I guess I'm part of that, would, would love the coloured uniforms and the vestments, the wonderful care. If you saw the programme about the tailors who made these, these uniforms, the incredible skills involved and still being worked on in this country. Good to see we do still make things. Some of you would love the, the vestments. I'm not quite into those, but there you are. The jewels, the galia, the ancient rituals, the glorious architecture, the heavenly music, the sense of history. And some of you would say, well, well, that's all a bit too much. They want something a bit simpler. Couldn't they just arrive on a, on a donkey? And some of you would have all kinds of mixture of feelings. You would have, like me, a kind of love of that, but some discomfort at moments when the ritual becomes disconnected from the realities of today when the ritual becomes disconnected with the Jesus of Nazareth, the man on the cross. And yet, knowing that at other times that service pointed so clearly to that Jesus who came not to be served, but to serve. I think it's right that we have that mixture of reactions both within the church family and, to some extent, within ourselves. I think the most moving point for me was when King Charles was in a simple shirt awaiting the anointing. A human being like any other human being with all the nervousness and the anxiety and the stresses and the sense of moment and privilege of that day. Over and above all that happened yesterday is that greater truth, which I believe it proclaimed, that in Paul's words, God has highly exalted Jesus and given Jesus the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God 
the Father. Our readings today draw us into that wonder of who Jesus is, of how he shows us and brings us to the Father, to the heavenly heavenly God, the divine, eternal reality. However we name that reality, this spiritual power that is behind the whole of life and the whole of creation. I rather like singing God Save the King because it reminds us that God still has a part to play within our nation, despite many believing or not believing in such a reality. It reminds us that we all need saving, and perhaps more than anyone, the king needs saving and has a saviour in Jesus Christ. And the king, God save the king, reminds us that it's not just down to majority voting, political sways and swings, that there are some powers and in a sense this king has a representative role, representing history, representing the nation, beyond all the politics and all the arguments of today. If we didn't have a king, well, what would we invent instead? I was for many years a fan of Oliver Cromwell, but I have kind of gone off him. He did become a tyrant. He did terrible things, even though his beginning was to oppose a tyrant who happened to be a king. Let's hope that King Charles III preserves our laws and reminds us of that diversity of the nation and that history of the nation with all its all its swings and roundabouts the first letter of peter takes us back to basics taste like newborn babies draw spiritual milk and grow in the love of god you have tasted that the Lord is good. That taste of goodness is what we want to carry in our mouths and in our hearts in the days ahead. We need that sustenance, like spiritual milk, from our glorious loving God, our heavenly parent, our heavenly mother as much as our heavenly father, our God who is beyond all our categories and all our images, drawing sustenance from that loving God. You have tasted that the Lord is good. The service yesterday culminated in the sharing of the Lord's Supper. It was a strange moment in that it was a moment just for those very involved, the archbishops and the king and queen, watched on by this immense crowd. If only we could have shared that bread and wine with everyone and been one body in the love of God. But it did remind us that we need sustenance. We all need sustenance. We don't carry that kind of heavy crown on our heads, but we do carry things on our shoulders. We carry burdens. And so we come again to this table to be sustained, to draw that spiritual sustenance and to taste that the Lord is not distant, the Lord is not judgmental, the Lord is not imaginary, the Lord is good. 
in a phrase that uh, has often been used, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. So like our earthly king, let's draw close to the table and let's taste that all that God is good in Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's just keep a moment of quiet as we pray for ourselves and for our nation and our world. I invite you to make this prayer your own after my words, Lord, in your mercy, to join me in saying, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, loving God, we thank you for the nations of the world in all their diversity and for our common humanity, sharing as we do with all nature life on this planet. We give thanks for the official ending of the COVID pandemic. And we pray for all who continue to suffer its effects, whether physical or economic. And we pray for the whole medical profession and scientific community as they battle the diseases of today and prepare for the viruses of tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we thank you for our nation and for the celebrations of this weekend. We thank you for the freedom to protest, to share different beliefs and ideas, but we also give thanks for the coronation service and the way many different people were brought together in that moment. We pray your blessing on the celebrations of today and tomorrow for the community work that is being done on Monday. And we pray your wisdom for all in government and leadership in this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our local community and we pray your blessing, Lord, on our council members and all who serve in local government. And we pray for those across the country who have been newly elected to serve their localities that government will be brought to the people and the people will be involved in the life and the decisions of their locality. Bless this town and area and bless especially those suffering through poverty, anxiety, unemployment, all the stresses of modern life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the church in all its diversity. And we thank you for the expressions of that unity in moments in yesterday's service. And the openness towards other faiths and the friendship that our King represents in his person. We pray for the churches of this town in their witness to the Lordship of Christ. And in our loving relationship with people of other faiths. We pray for preparations for thy kingdom come and Christian Aid Week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we give thanks for our own lives, for our families and friends. And we pray for those on our hearts today. Those in hospital, those caring for them, those recovering from operations or injuries, those coming to the end of their lives. 
those who are very frail or lonely. Bless and keep them, we pray, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept and use these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our King and our Lord. Amen.